Are you serious? There's plenty of ways to kill an hour out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. My name is Marcus Bronzy. And I'm producer Bill. Yeah, man. Um, how you doing, Billy boy? I'm still in Cornwall, obviously. Um, shh. Not too bad, man. Quite getting well, used to this presenter duties. Don't get too fucking used to it. All right, Bill? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, um, weather in Cornwall is so grim. Billy, I don't know. Should I share why I'm in Cornwall or not? Like, is it is it weird if I tell you what I'm about to tell you? Like, it's a bit it's a bit of a personal situation, but at the same time, I'm not too down. I'm down, but I'm not super down about it. Um, it's up to you, my man. What what do you wanna? Yeah, yeah. My granddad passed away, Bill. That's why oh, I'm here. Man. But you know what? He had a fucking great innings. Eighty five years old. Did his thing was independent to the end. So it's sad, yes, but at the same time, I've got to rate somebody who's done 85 years. Yeah, man. Sorry about, sorry to hear that, fella. Nah, thanks, man. I just thought, like, it's been a bit weird. Like, over the last, that's why it's been a bit ski whiff over the last few weeks, like a few episodes where it's been, like, recorded with no kit because I had to rush down there and brush back. A few, like, and I've, and, uh, and then, like, last week was a bit all over the place. And if I'm honest, with you listening, like, I've not even told Billy, I have think mentioned a little bit to, like, a couple of other presenters on the side, but I was just kind of handling shit on this side of things, man. And just in case you're wondering why me and Bill are always on the other side of a frigging phone or not always linking up as often, or there's been a little change in programming, but now nah, cheers, man, Bill. Like, thank you very much. It's one of them ones. Like I said, man, it's just, um, get me, if I could do 85 years like that and enjoy some life. Uh, yeah, that'll be me. I mean, I don't know. Do you think we'll be living for longer than 85 years? You got that cryotech technology, didn't you? Yeah, there's been a lot Coming of talk in. about people getting frozen. Have you been? Yeah, that have 14 you... year old girl. Did you see in the news? Yeah. So, do you, did you actually see? I, I, I read it briefly. Did you actually see what happened with this girl? No, I just heard. Uh, I just read the headline. I didn't really go into it. I thought oh, that looks kind of cool. Um, I think. Uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, but um, she has cancer, as you said. That when she when she passes away, she wants to be cryogenically frozen to when there's a cure, so then she can be brought back to life. Is that right or am I wrong? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where it was. This was. The point of being frozen is so that you can get brought back. That's what I presume is the whole point of being gradually frozen. So, yeah. yeah. Um, makes me think, man, like, yeah, living, living forever. Living or living for a lot longer. Interesting, man. Interesting. I don't know whether I think I, part of me says, yeah, let's just do it. Live forever. But then... You might get bored. You might get bored and think, yeah, oh. you get bored. And it depends like what the quality of life is. Like if I'm a fucking brain in a jar, living forever can eat a bag of fucking dicks. Because you know what? At the moment, I love the fact that I'm full of energy. I can get up, do shit. Yeah. My body's strong enough so that I can have a proper session on a night out and have a few drinks, get mash up and still bounce back and be all right. Um, I go gym. I lift all right weights. I, I exercise every day. I'm, I'm happy, bruv. So I think the hardest thing is like when you're, you know, like, 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 yeah, I couldn't be a brain in a jar, bro. Like, maybe I could be one of those cool ass um, cyborgs. Tell you what, though. Yeah. I reckon there's be technology where you could get to a certain age. Say, like, I want to, you grow to say, say this technology's around. Yeah. You grow to your 25 or 26, around like middle, yeah. middle 20s. Yeah. And you think, I'm going to stay at 25 years old for the rest of my life. Shit. And then there'll be a yes. way to yes. allow you to stop growing. Hell yes. Hell yes. Think about it. Your dick's on point, stands up straight and does its job, but you've got experience because like an 18-year-old you doesn't know what they're doing with pussy compared to a 26-year-old you. Do you know what I mean? So 26-year-old you, you know your way around the pussy, yeah? Or ladies, you know your way around a dick or whatever, whatever is your flavour of the month. Yeah, you know your way around those body parts. You've lived a little bit of life. You know what you like to drink. You know what you don't like to drink. You know what you like to do. You know what you don't like to do. It's a perfect age. Perfect. And you're healthy as well. Yeah, healthy as shit. So you can do fucked up shit. You know, you can break a leg if you need to. And you still, you know, it it still fixes itself all right. Do you know what I mean? Um, Yeah, you know what, Billy? That's a good idea. That's a good fucking idea. That is, And you know what? The first people I'd want to freeze at at certain ages are my favourite wrestlers. Because they don't make wrestlers like they used to, Billy. I've got to say. wrestlers. Yep. I watched uh, Survivor Series last night. That's why, uh, last week, sorry. Yeah. That's because um, that was why I was tired on the last episode. Ah, right. Okay. Because you were watching wrestling. And you know what, Billy? It's interesting because it feels like there's only hype around WWE when they're bringing people back. 
Yeah. It doesn't feel like anywhere. Like I would freeze The Rock back when he was at his prime. I'd freeze Goldberg. I might even freeze Hulk Hogan before he got all racist and shit like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But um, but yeah, like they just seem to like whenever I put on wrestling, there's a hype. It's because they've brought back someone. I don't think they've got who have they got that's got the same sort of flair. Right. Yeah, as 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 Ric Flair, as other wrestlers now. You got Lesnar, Brock Lesnar. He's not got personality though, has he? Yeah, but he's just a beast, isn't he? Yeah, but that's not personality. He's just big. The big um, show had oh, big personality. You got well, I could see you got Chris Jericho, but Chris Jericho is one of the older older guys. Yeah, I can't, yeah, that's a good question. They got John Cena. They got John Cena, which has got some weird catchphrase, which I still don't get. You can't see me, but bro, yeah. I clearly can see you. You got Kevin Owens. He's quite funny. I can say Kevin Owens is closest to one who's got a bit of charisma. All right. All right. It's just The Rock, man. The Rock was my guy. Goldberg. Stone Cold Steve Austin. (sighs) Crazy. His charisma is just unreal. I mean, uh, if I had that much charisma, I don't know what I would do. The Rock. Oh, man. Yeah. Bruv. So witty as well. Kills it. Kills it. Kills it. Anyway, um... Uh, so you've been killing time watching some wrestling, I guess. Then this week, yeah, yeah, man, cool. It's, it's good. Yeah, wicked. Um, I've been playing some games, Bill. Um, do you want to play a game? What type of games, man? Uh, I've been playing Watch Dogs Two, uh, Ubisoft. In fact, we fucked up. We we were meant to get our hands on it early and have an interview with someone from the dev team, but we just fucked up because of all this shit that's been going on, like I've said. I don't want to dwell on it. But yeah, so we missed out on, on a conversation with Dev Team. But just so you know, in the future, we will be having conversations with games developers and getting some exclusive info on games, like we did with Battlefield for the VR and PS. Um, so yeah, Watch Dogs 2, Bill. So Watch Dogs, the first game, was one of the release titles on the PS4. I don't know if you remember it and what it was about. It was kind of a, it was a game where uh, I can't remember the guy's name, <laughs> but you're basically set in the future where everything is connected via Wi-Fi and cellular data. And then there's this company, um, which is called CTOS, which has kind of created this system of information gathering through it. And you kind of work hacking your way to the top to find out information about some family members and blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it, you know what? It's, Shall I give it a better explanation, Billy, for Watch Dogs 1? Was that a bit weak? Yeah. Do you remember I, Watch Dogs 1? I've, I've never played Watch Dogs, so you're doing quite a good explanation of it now. So it seems... Okay, cool. It sounds very similar to, the, to um, nowadays. You're saying that everything's connected and more or less everything is connected these days. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a couple... Of, yeah, it was so it was like... Basically, it was a guy called Aiden Pierce. He was, this, he was like a hacker, right? And there's this new operating system they launched in Chicago and he wants to use it to to find out the killers of his niece, basically. But then it gets a lot deeper than that. But throughout the game, you kind of realise, yeah, like you said, it's quite relevant, Billy, to nowadays because everything's interconnected. Um, so cars, you know, we've got smart cars now and shit like Teslas and that, yeah? got smart cars you've got phones everywhere which have the processing power of like fucking computers so it's a game where you the 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 fun exciting part of it was hacking into shit as you ran around the game um as a release title i do remember this though ubisoft the 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 promos that we saw the graphics looked notably better than the actual gameplay on the ps4 um and it's an ongoing thing that's upsetting me a little bit of ubisoft because i noticed the same thing with um what was the multiplayer game called, Bill? That was almost that. That was like everyone was oh, fucking hell. The multiplayer game from Ubisoft. Uh, what do you mean? It was just solely multiplayer. Uh, everyone loved it for multiplayer. Uh, it was like COD, but it wasn't. It was third person. Uh, I, got, um, I don't know. Oh, fucking hell! Ubisoft. Well, you you researching it now? The Division. That was it. The Division. Oh man, yeah, yeah, the that, that was good. So that it was, was good. Sick. It was really good. But the but when you looked at the demo play, the graphics just looked a little bit more shinier in the demo. I don't know if that is a thing that people moan about. Like, but I'm always a bit wary about Ubisoft games because when you see the demos, they look like really slick. And then when you play the game, don't get me wrong, the graphics are sick, but they're just like I don't know, man. Somebody promises me two watermelons. I don't want to get two oranges when I get to the shop. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, man, um, definitely. 
But in this one, one of the things that drew me to this version of the game was that it's set in San Francisco. That's not what drew it to me. There's a guy in the game who's got a fucking sexy name. His name's Marcus. Yeah. Ah. And he wants to join this crew called DeadSec who want to take down uh, the corrupt system which is making its way through the entire of San Francisco. So basically, similar to what happened in Chicago in the last game, um, this system is taking over San Francisco and this group of people want to want to fight against it. So it's a slightly younger version of Watch Dogs from the from what I've played. I've not I've played the game for about three hours. Um slightly younger version. So Marcus is a kid or he's a, a young 20s gentleman. He's quite savvy, cracks joke. It's very um, millennial, the sort of stuff. So like one of the little side missions that I've done, you might even recognise this story. There's a guy who bought the cure for leukaemia and pushed the price up. Did you hear about a guy that done something similar in real life? <laughs> a can- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, sounds very familiar. Yeah. Where they got that idea ex- from? Exactly, yeah. And he's a cunt. And check this. He bought an album. He he bought an album of a rapper. He wants to buy a rapper's album for two million so no one else can hear it. Uh-huh. That same yeah. guy actually bought the Wu Tang album, didn't he? I don't even want to mention his name. He's a cunt. The guy that done it in real life. But yeah, so there's stuff like that which is quite relevant. Um, and they just say stuff. You hear them saying like, oh, that was lit and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, so the colloquialisms are like bang on point for this for 2016. It's joke. Um, in terms of gameplay, I do like shit where you hack into stuff. Um, you can kind of choose whether to be like really covert and like no one knows you were there and like shit, you know, you can hack your way into stuff or you can roll in all guns blazing and there's great skill sets, which you do. Like if you do get this game, like I'd say develop your skill sets because you can do some fucking cool ass stuff. Like, um, I like calling the feds on other people or calling gangs on other people. So like if there's someone that you want to get mashed up, you can call a gang member and say, yeah, yeah, that guy that stole your money is right here and like G them up and then get them smashed up. That's one of the features I like. Graphically, I think it looks beautiful. Um, the story's pretty cool for now. Um, the only thing I'm going to say, Bill, is I was a big fan of Watch Dogs 1 because I like that kind of game. But it was very similar. I mean, this second version is like a continuation of the first game at the moment. So there's a couple of extra cool things in it. You get like a couple of drones and, and RC devices, but it's kind of the same game. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how to... I see what you mean, yeah. You know, like, I don't know. It, it didn't offend me so much with GTA because they managed to twist up bits of the game. But to, uh, in essence, GTA games are the same task, isn't it? You've got to go somewhere, shoot someone up, fly a plane, do this. But they managed to make them seem like they're different and fun. Yeah. The story is the story's different each yeah. time. It's the, it's the, the story, yeah, the story smashes... Exactly. The story smashes it. And with this, the story's good, but I feel like it's like more of the same. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I feel mm. like... May, hopefully when I play it there'll be more development but I don't know I feel like there needs to be more in terms of difference and you know apparently the sales in the second week ain't doing too well for the game but you know it's one of them ones but yeah but it, but I liked it man I liked it. it I don't even know I don't even know if I want to star it up Billy but um, you but, don't oh wow yeah I don't know I don't know but it, a good game and I will play it because my kind of game, but it is a continuation of Watch Dogs. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know. If you like the first Watch Dogs, you'll like this. If you didn't, it's more of the same. That's that's all I can say, really. It's not a dynamically different, different game. You get me, Bill? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, you been up to any other app business or game playing? Not really, not, not really this week. Um, I've just been continuing playing FIFA, really. Smashing up the FIFA, go Bill! I'll tell you what, I I um, I met Akuma, bro. Akuma, I, I actually met Akuma. <laughs> you think I'm joking, you, bro? You, you beat him up? No, I didn't beat. No, I'm I'm serious, bro. I met Akuma, bro. I met actual Akuma. So it wasn't someone bo- dresses Akuma. It was like the voice actor of Akuma. I met Akuma at the at the barber shop, bro. Me and Akuma had a chat. I'm so confused. All right, basically, um, I was um getting a trim, and at, at my barber's, obviously, and this geezer walked in, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I remember my barber's been saying for a few years, like, um, because I've done a little bit of acting work. He's like, "Oh yeah, someone else I trim. He's an actor." Da-da-da-da-da-da. So I'm 
This guy walks in. I'm like, fucking hell. You're the guy from Bourne Ultimatum that had that sick fight scene in the shower. You know the guy that as a, they have a proper, like if you've not seen it, go watch it. There's a wicked fight scene with Jason Bourne in the shower. Do you remember that, Bill, or not? Ah, uh, him. Yes, oh, bro. He punches it. He gets a book and like punches yeah. him in the face with the book. Punches a man with and a then book. Then he goes and like goes in the shower. Yeah. And then he like gets and gets a towel, takes the knife off him, and then that like, strangles him. Yeah, that's sick fight. Yeah, and then they're chasing each other on like mopeds and bikes for a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, the actor's name's Joey Ansar. Yeah, so he's. I walk into the barbers and my barber's like finishing lining this bro up, and he walks out. I go, what the fuck? Is that him, bro? Nah, and then Barbara goes, oh yeah, 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 that's that guy. He's just gone to get some cash. Got some cash out, paid the bar. I said, bruv, that was a sick fight scene, you know. I'm not just saying it. That was a sick... And he was like, yeah, talking to me about what he does. And um, he's an actor and he's also a director and a writer. And they wrote the Street Fighter Assassin's Fist series, which is on um, Netflix at the moment. And he plays a Coomer in it, bro. So uh, he's, a, uh, he's my producer head. Yeah, Did you get him involved in Marcus Meets? Oh, sh- for Marcus Meets, you know what? Do you think that would be a good one? Marcus Meets Akuma? Yeah, man. All right, cool, cool. Sitting down, because he does martial arts, um, as well as being an actor and, and, and a director and a writer, man. He's fucking super talented. And I, I've actually bumped into him before at a Street Fighter event years ago where they got people that played Street Fighter characters to play to play the game. So he was like playing as Akuma. And someone else was playing the thing, but he, he actually does like the game. So I need to watch um, all of those Street Fighter of um, that series again, man. But yeah, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll put him on Marcus Meets. What you mean? Um, our brother podcast called Marcus Meets, where I meet yeah, a plethora of people that are interesting. Some who you know, some who you don't. That that one. Yep, that one. Definitely, I'll get him involved in that, man. Why the fuck not? But yeah, that's a Kuma, man. Were you a big Street Fighter fan, Billy? Or was that kind of did that did that hit you? Yeah, it was always between Street Fighter and Tekken for me. I wasn't really a Mortal Kombat guy. I haven't really played a lot of Mortal Kombat, but I'm more Street Fighter or Tekken. Street Fighter, number one. Tekken, number two. Mortal Kombat, third. I was more Ken. I liked, I liked playing as Ken. Why were you Ken and not Ryu? Just, it was, I don't know. For some reason, I just chose Ken more so than Ryu. Just, it was the, um, Hurricane, the one where he does like an uppercut. And you Ken. Yeah, that's the one. What, but you, but what, so you didn't like, but bro, I don't know why, man. I just felt like Ryu was was pure, man, pure with the kung fu. Like Ken was like the American; he was the all American thing. But but Ryu was just like, nah, I'm just I'm just all about the positive kung fu vibes. That's what it was. I feel like Ken was a like Ken was more evil than Ryu. Does that make sense? Evil, but then there's an evil Ryu, isn't there? There is an evil Ryu. Yeah, yeah, and then there's a Kuma as well, who's just the Don. You just are done kicking their ass, but yeah, you see, he's more of a street fighter guy. Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. What about the other characters like Sagat and Blanca and that? Sagat, is it the one who is who's the fellow with the stretchy arms? Zangief, Zangief, Yo- yeah. Yoga Flame. <laughs> Was it? Oh, who's the guy who goes fire truck, fire truck? Who's this? That who says fire truck? No, it's just that's just a joke between me and my mates. It sounds like fire truck, it's you fire chuck or something like that. Who says he's that? He's a big guy. He's got big, big feet in that. Um, let's let's Google it. Let's just Google some feet Street Fighter characters. But yeah, he goes fire truck. It sounds like that anyway. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, bro. Fire Chuck. Oh, what's his name? I f- you sure that's not that's not Zangief? I mean, um, that's not that's not uh, uh yeah, that's not. not it's Sagat. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, I, to, I like the original Street Fighter characters, the newer ones that I'm not too keen on, but the original ones, like Guli, Guli, G U I L E, Guile, yeah, Guli, fuck sake, Guli, <laughs> Guile, he's a classic. Guile's a classic. I, I never really liked Vega. Vega was just he looks good, but it was the like Wolverine yeah. things coming out of his head. I thought oh, this guy would be sick. Yeah, it just wasn't good. He's Blanca evil. was the guy that you use if you like crap at a game, and you just use electricity and just yeah, that's if, all you do. If you could go for a drink with a Street Fighter character, which one would you go with? Our brother's got to be um, either Cami or Chun Li. So you want to go for a drink, drink with Cami? Yeah, I just meant for like a mate drink. But if you want to talk about who you're going to bang in Street Fighter, cool. Who would you bang? 
Oh man, it's difficult. We've got Chun Li or Cami. They both they both look tasty. But, but I don't know what's what's Cami saying in Street Fighter. I don't know. Like what what what? what? You got to pick one, Billy. I got to pick one. Ah, oh, damn man. I do. I do like my American girls, so let's go for Cami. Do you go for Cami? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Boy, I don't know. You know. I don't know if I've I don't know if I've got it, you know. Well, can I not just take? I think I'd have to take someone else for a drink, you know. But I'm, I don't think I'm. Um, what's the big guy called? There's quite a few big guys. The fat guy. Um, e Honda. E Honda. That's it. Um, yeah, I might take. I'd want to go for some food and drinks with him, not to bang him, obviously, because um, he's one, not that way inclined. Two, he'd fucking flatten me and kill me. Um, I don't know, or maybe not. Maybe maybe he'd be on the bottom, but I don't know. I'm not going that far. Oh Jesus! <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, no nah, man, I'd, I'd, I'd want to go out for a rave or a drink or something. I don't know. I don't know if um, go out for a rave with Ryu. Yeah, rave what with Ryu would be sick. Bar fight with Ryu, bro. I'd be telling every. I'd be slapping bouncers, everyone, just to get a rise out of Ryu. Be like Ryu, bro. That guy said you're a wanker. And it, that fucking you can't Hadouken. Not Hadouken's fake. I'd fucking love that. Uh, anyway, um, I think that's uh, the end of this episode, Bill. There's plenty of ways to kill an hour out there. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been producer Bill. Thank you for killing some time with us, and we'll be back with another episode shortly. 